that all the cards are going to give out, the children are also going to do their part. Every one of us, let's focus. This Christmas is just not about our little parties at home. Let's focus on building the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. All right. So this evening, I think the uh, Wudu is going to have their, Wudu service is going to have their uh, Christmas Christmas dinner. So you're welcome to join if you want to, but uh, I, uh, they have invited 120. The Wudu service is growing. They're having 120 people invited to come for this dinner. And uh, Pastor Joe is speaking for tonight's service. And they are a great group of <laughs> Christians who really know how to worship God and pray. You know, we just visited Shepherd Center yesterday. Uh, not a very big group followed us, but nonetheless, we never failed to visit them at least once a year to take the church with us. And it was so, so, they were so happy. They said, this is our church. Every time you go, this is our church. <laughs> C3 is our church. And we are so glad that we have a church who loves us, supports us. And uh, they're just amazing people. The children, I'm telling you, I was in their service. Most of the kids have gone back home or whatever. And they only had about 50 kids there. But the presence of God, the moment they open their mouth to worship, the presence of God is so powerful there. And the prayer, the simple prayer, you know, they, it's children, but they've got simple faith. And every time when they have uh, problems or their needs, they, have, uh, they need provision, they just pray and God answers prayer supernaturally for them. For the last 22 years, what we're supporting them is nothing compared to how God has financed the whole uh, Shepherd Center. So God is good through your faithful giving. Thank you so much, church. Every one of you, I know you have given above and beyond your tithe and your offerings to the missions as well. And because of your giving, we are able to do what we're doing. And we'll never stop doing this for our missions the, the, because they need our, our finances. Huh? Shepherd Center is so thankful to you for all the years that you have been faithfully giving to them. Praise God. Amen. Let's give God a praise offering for Shepherd Center, for all the works that we are doing for Kappa, Kuala Slango, all the in a Saturday KA. <laughs> that the, you know what? The Saturday KA, they already have their food sponsored. Agnes went over down. You said uh, McDonald's has already sponsored us twice and uh, Pizza has sponsored Domino's or whatever sponsored was. Who else are we going to get sponsored? I, told, I always tell Agnes, just believe God, these orphans uh, are going to have a great party, not some curry puffs or vades. <laughs> That's not what the Christmas salad. Throw a huge party, uh, makan for them. And this time she was thinking, where should I go? And she just walked down the road to the Swad. Swadi, uh, Swadi a restaurant, the air-conditioned restaurant up there, and just ask them, would you like to sponsor some of the orphan kids that we are, you know, are doing this coming Christmas? And they say, yes! Just like that, the favour of God is on them, and they're giving, throwing them a big makan. Wow! Huh? Makan better than our makan, okay? These kids, and then uh, the Christmas present, I say, yeah, no problem, we will sponsor the presents for the kids. And, and do you know what? She told me that the Wudu children, Wudu service, the Pakistani children, ah, they have decided that they want to buy the presents for them, for these orphans. Look at that. I say, yes, go ahead. You know, I say, when the kids learn to give when they're young, God's going to bless them and their generations to come. I say, Amen. let the children give. Amen. Let them give. Amen. We encourage the children to give. Amen. Amen. And uh, I think we go, we, we give and it shall be given. And uh, I've, I've got already sponsorship from the KL Church. They're raising some money and they say, what shall we give? Shall we give it to the church? No, we don't want to give, keep any money for this Christmas. We're going to give it away. All right. And so they are raising the funds and they're going to channel it to the Pakistan children. So hallelujah. So everywhere, everybody's giving. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Huh? Christmas is the time of giving and we're giving and making everyone happy. Huh? All the kids, the precious kids. They're going to have great Christmas. So, this coming Christmas, don't forget, this is the party, the biggest party on earth. Not your little house party, although you spent a lot of time, a lot of energy and money in that. God's house party got to be the biggest. Can I hear an amen? amen. Come on. All right? So, I want you, people have put in so much effort. This youth has put in effort. People have put in so much effort. Let's not come alone. Let's make sure every one of our friends and neighbors get invited to come. All right? And I, I, I know that it's going to be packed because two services are going to be on. 
Praise God, praise God, praise God. I, I've got this message here and uh, oh, I got so inspired this morning, uh, preaching and overshot my time, <laughs> interpretation. Uh, but I, I just, wow, I just got so much to share, but the, the testimonies of what God's doing, you know, uh, what God's going to, about to do in our church, I'm just so excited. Uh, and let's pray. Father, I thank you for these people. Let's come hungry to hear your word. I pray that the word of God is going to sow in the hearts of every hearer and they, they will not just hear my voice, they will hear your voice in their hearts, speaking to them of the vision that you have for their lives and for the great work and the great days ahead, the great future that you have planned for them and purpose for them that's going to be fulfilled as they believe your word and run with your word. Hallelujah. Father, your promises to us is yes and amen. And we know that all good things, nothing good will you withhold from us who walk walk before you and we trust you trust you for every single need of our church not just for our own personal need but the needs of our church and the needs of others who are in need of we know that all our needs have been sufficiently abundantly provided for and thank you for the generosity of your people we pray they continue to prosper every single one of them raise them up for such a time as this to do the great work that you call our church to do and to fulfill thank you bless this congregation today we ask in jesus mighty name we pray and ask amen amen i'm going to talk about five lies that the devil tries to tell you to get you to quit there's so many lies of course i'm just only focusing on this five because i'm going to take it from the bible a passage from nehemiah the one thing that you need to understand about the devil is that he's already defeated at the cross he's already defeated but what he plans to do is he plans to weave his lies in your head. <laughs> and those lies are the things that's going to defeat you. Not him. Because he, he doesn't have any authority over you. But his lies can defeat you if you believe his lies. Right? So, how can we take authority over him? These are the three things you need to understand. You ready? The first thing you need to understand is we don't need to defeat the devil. We simply need to defeat his lies. That's where we need to defeat him at. How do we defeat his lies? With the truth of God's word. Very simple. If the truth makes me free, then lies are going to imprison me. We are imprisoned many times by our past. We are imprisoned by our pain. We are imprisoned by our fears. We are imprisoned by our limitations. There are so many things that are trying to limit us. And you know what? It's only the truth of God's words that's going to expose and dispel the lies that the devil tries to keep us in bondage. So we're going to study from here. What are some of the lies? Do you know there's no fight between light and darkness? Absolutely nothing. No fight at all. Just like light, light does not have to uh, fight with darkness. All we need to do is what? Switch on the light. Turn it on. When the light turns on, what happened? Light, darkness have to flee. Darkness just have to flee. So in the same way, when we know the truth, the truth of God's word is going to dispel those lies and the truth will set us free. Okay, so this is the one important first point. The second point is... Jesus cannot defeat your wrong thinking. You have to be responsible for your wrong thinking, your own thinking. Did you hear that? No one can control your thinking except you. Jesus is not going to go inside your mind and try to dismantle your mind and change your mind inside. No, he's not going to do that. You have to be responsible to renew your mind. To know the word of God, to understand the word of God, to believe the word of God, to pray the word of God, to declare the word of God. You have to do it. Jesus is not going to be responsible to do that for you. So that's why we need to understand, you have a choice. You have to choose the kind of mindset you're going to adopt. Today we're going to see. So many times people say, I want to change, I want to change. And they struggle to change. They're focusing on their behavior. They're focusing on the way they live. But no change. 
After a few attempts, they go back to the same thing again. You know, every uh, new year, people always say, oh, I'm going to turn over a new leaf. I'm going to turn over a new leaf. How many times have turned over a new leaf? How many leaves have turned over? Nothing has changed. They're still doing, behaving the same way, doing the same old thing year after year. Do you know why? Change doesn't come by trying to change your behavior. It starts with changing your mindset. Right believing will result in right thinking. Right thinking will result in right living. So it's a mind. This is where you got to change first. If you're going to see any permanent change, it's going to be here. And it's not going to be just one time or two times. You got to repeatedly. That's why many times in all pastor, I've heard this again and again. Do you have to repeat this? Don't you have any anything new to, to talk about? Oh yes, we do have. We can tell you lots of things. But you know what? We need to learn things again and again, repeatedly. How do you learn your times table like once I told you? Repeatedly by repetition, right? In the same way, there are some things we have to re remember because it's, we are forgetful hearers. We need to remember again and again. Renewing a mind is a key to change. Amen? And the third thing you need to remember is the father of lies. Who is that? Satan is the father of all lies. From the beginning of time, Satan has always operated in lies. What did he tell Adam and Eve? God said, <coughs> do not eat from the tree of knowledge and good, good and evil. And what did he say? Contradicted God. No, it's okay for you to eat. You shall not die. And the devil always contradicts what God says. You see that? That's his tactics. He uses lies to accomplish three things in your life. And what, what is it? John 10.10. 10. Three things he does, threefold plan for your life is he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Three things. How does he do that? How does he kill, steal, and destroy? Through his lies. That's it. He has no power except the power of lies. So it's very important that we need to understand he's going to come around and he's going to lie to you. He's going to whisper it, whatever he wants you to believe. That you're a loser that you're a failure, that you're no good, that you're not enough of education. That's why you, are, you don't have the job that you are struggling to get. You don't have enough money. <laughs> you don't have enough of success. You don't have, you're not good enough. You failed too many times. You messed up. So that's why he's, he's going to repeatedly tell every single one of us. And... What happens if we're going to listen to him? Then we're going to be imprisoned by his lies. All right? So lies imprison you. What happens? The truth of God will set you free. So what are we going to do about it? Let me give you this verse. Very important verse. Mark chapter 3 verse 27. Mark chapter 3 verse 27 says, well, No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first bind the strong man and then he will plunder his house. Who is this strong man that it's talking about in the verse? Who is that? Huh? Who's the strong man that we need to go in and bind him and then only then we can plunder his house? The devil. The devil is the one. Satan is the one that's a strong man. And so we've got to find the strong man and find where his house is. Now we need to, what happened? We need to bind him and then only we can plunder his house. Yes or not? That's what it says, right? Okay, so where has a strong man built his house? Chow kid? <laughs> or is this Chow kid? Oh, the sin is there, pastor. <laughs> what clan? Where's a strong man building his house? Where's the devil building his house? <laughs> Absolutely. In your mind. That's where he comes in to build his house. He's building a wall of lies. Right? To keep you in. Do you know walls are built, you can be built on lies or it can be built on truth. And of course, he's building his wall of lies around you to surround you, to keep you, imprison you inside. So that when you try to get out, uh, you try to break through, you can't. What do you do? You retreat. He tries to confine you, define you, and say, this is who you are. You cannot change. You cannot come out of this prison. You cannot ever come out, break through this barrier. 
And that's how he has brought lies into your life and stolen your things. He's stolen everything. He's stolen so many things from us. He's stolen your time. He's stolen your money. He's stolen your peace of mind. He's stolen uh, your family. He's stolen your health. He's stolen opportunities from you. Everything that he has stolen and he's kept back from you. Today, our objective is we're going to find out where his house. We're going to find out where are the strongholds that are holding us back. When we find the strongholds, then we can bind him, right? So that is the first thing we need to do is identify what are the strongholds. Now, let me ask you now, what are strongholds? You always use this word, strongholds, bind the strongholds. What are the strongholds? Okay, from the Bible, a stronghold is this. A stronghold is either a military fort or a prison. All right, did you get it? It's either built uh, to protect what's inside or it's built to what? Imprison the people that's inside. Either to protect or to imprison. All right, so this is what we're going to supposed to do. We're supposed to pull down his walls of lies that imprison us and build up the walls of truth. Of God's word. Huh. That protects us from his lies. So a stronghold is an incorrect kind of pattern of thinking inside of us that's molded inside our mindset. And it will affect how we feel, how we respond to people, and the decisions that we make. Like I said, the first thing that we have to handle is identifying, find the strongholds in your mind. It's not just a one thought that enters your, your head. Not just one time. It is something that repeatedly you are thinking on and it's a mind that is fixed and that's why we call it a mindset. It's a way of thinking that you have. Okay, what is a mindset? Let me give you an illustration. A mindset is like a thermostat. You know what's a thermostat, right? All of us have air conditioning and there's thermostat that sets the temperature of the room. So you set the thermostat at the temperature you want, yes, maybe 16 degrees. And what happened? Everything in a room, whether it's hot or cold, will rise to the temperature that you have set. Rise to the level of the thermostat that you have set. This is a mindset. You see that? So a mindset is really a mental and a spiritual thermostat. So if you have a mindset of defeat and shame, if that's your mindset, what happens is everything around you is going to reflect that mindset of defeat and shame. But if you have a mindset that's focused on the kingdom of God and the things of God, what happens? Everything is also going to manifest. Everything around you is going to manifest huh, the peace of God. You're going to see that happen. So what kind of mindset do you have? Psalms, or not Psalms, Isaiah 26 verse 3 here says, this is a verse that we always read and I want to bring this out. The word here it uses is you will, you will keep him in perfect peace. God will keep you in perfect peace. How? If your mind is stayed on him. Okay, here say whose mind are steadfast. Okay, New King James Version says stayed on him. Okay, and uh, I think uh, the Message Bible says it's set on you. Because you trust him. So you see, there's a mindset. Colossians says, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your, set your heart. So there's a set, set your mind, set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Okay, Philippians 4 verse 8 here says, finally brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Did you see that? So as your mind dwells on what is good, good is going to manifest itself. When your mind starts to dwell on what is lovely, what happens is the lovely things going to happen in your life. I've said this repeatedly. The mind that's set on the flesh is death. The mind that's set on spirit is life and peace. So you have to decide now. <laughs> what is the mindset that you're going to have? The kingdom of God? What's the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is what? The Bible say. Is it food and drinks? No, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. So how are you going to set your mindset on the things? Of, when the devil tries to come and bring, what's that? Mm, uh, bring you condemnation, bring you 
uh, feelings of shame and defeat, what happened? You got to set your mind on my righteousness in Christ. Okay, what you focus on is what's going to happen in, in your life. You, you, do you understand? So, you know, so, so many people want to change, they're always focusing on the wrong things. They want their children to change, but they're always focusing on the wrong things on their children. Keep telling the children what they're wrong, what they do wrong, how they badly behave. Just repeatedly repeating everything is only going to reinforce that. You've got to see who you are in Christ, what the Word of God says you are. Amen? That you're perfect in Christ, a new creation inside is perfect. It's powerful, it's pure, it's righteous. That's why you need to set that in your mind. <laughs> okay, that when the devil tries to get you to focus on what? Maybe uh, unrest and uh, maybe ups getting you upset. What are you going to set on? You're going to set on God's peace. I'm not going to let the devil upset me every time. Every time something bad happened or something you know, wrong happened in my life, I got, I'll get all upset and blow my top. <laughs> Huh? Or if the devil tries to get you to focus on how sad things are, how depressed you are, you know, how things are going so bad, you've got to set your mind on the joy of God. It's you. You have the power to do that, to change. Many people call me up. Yeah. Some of them uh, said, how are you, pastor? They're like, now Lizzie is gone. Everybody's gone. Just two of you left in the house. <laughs> Pastor say, woohoo, it's honeymoon time now. We are newly married couple. No? Then it's like, come to Sunday. Of course, weekday, we are all so busy. We don't even see her. Huh? Come to weekends, we miss the, uh, the lunch and the dinners that we have with her huh? on a Sunday and a Sunday evening. And so we all sit together and both of us look at each other and say, what are we going to do? Have dinner when I was by ourselves? And we say, hey! We're going to invite somebody out, okay? So we started inviting people out. We said, we've got so many spiritual sons and daughters. Why should we have our dinner by ourselves? So we started inviting. We say every time we're going to invite different people to come and have meals with us. So expect calls from us, church. <laughs> or you invite us out. Hello? <laughs> uh, okay? Don't say, Pastor, got no time for us. Pastor is too busy, okay? No, no, no. We have... Uh, time. It's a few weekends. Everybody is free. You know, we can't expect you to have lunch and uh, with us. Everyone's working in KL. Nobody works here. <laughs> no, no lunch with anybody huh? uh, during the weekdays. But so good for the family of God. So good to have the family of God. Huh? Uh, you, you're not alone. Okay. If you feel that you're alone, don't forget you have the extended family of God's family here. Exciting. For us, you know, uh, we, we, we're not getting ready to retire, not doing any more thing. In fact, Huh. Uh, last week, we had Pastor Jacob Korea. No? He's not even a pastor. He's really a prophet, an apostle and a prophet uh, with us. He was initially supposed to preach here. So sorry about that. <laughs> we got him to go over to KL because uh, he was staying in uh, Crystal Crown, PJ. So it's easier to get somebody to pick him. And so he was there, you know, and he was sharing with me about all the great things that's doing. He's, imagine he started a hospital in, in uh, India. <laughs> Hospital. I said, uh, did you get all this sponsor from America or something? No, no, no. <laughs> so I just sponsored. God just blessed me and has blessed me so much. I just started uh, the hospital. And now it is uh, running funding by itself because he, they, he make all the rich people pay and then uh, and the profit goes to paying for all the poor people who queue up every day to get free medical treatment. And the, and the hospital is so famous People don't mind paying the Catholics, the Hindus, everybody comes and they queue up for, sur uh, for surgery and everything and they charge them huh? maximum like anything and they still come. And that's how he's got five doctors, I said, and then he has started so many hundreds of churches, he's got 300 churches. My goodness, and he's 76. I said, this man is not slowing down, he's like amazing. I said, God. Oh my gosh, I said, this guy, yeah, I, he has been with us since, uh, t how many years ago? I, I forgot, maybe 26 years ago when he came and we were pioneering. Huh? All the older people will remember. I said, oh, you're not in Clang. Clang, some of the people will remember you. you know, and he comes, you know, Pastor likes to imitate him, Jacob Korean, and then he's short and he will just preach very simple the word of God and suddenly he will 
lay hands on you and prophesy over you. And he has, uh, he has imparted to our church, in fact, and I believe that it was through his impartation, through his ministry and impartation, that we are doing what we are doing. You know, we were struggling for two years. We were struggling financially in every way. And he was there. He stood with us. He prayed and he said, don't worry. And God's going to bless you. God's going to, you know, bless you so much. He's going to make you so wealthy. And we were like, huh? You know, wealthy. We're happy if we are, you know, have enough to cover. But that is what God's, uh, God has sent the servant. And he came again. And this time, Pastor Joe was here. And so I was there. And he the same thing. He, after his preaching, he went down and he laid in on me and he started prophesying over me uh, and for the church and for Pastor Joe. And he, he started saying amazing things. He said, what you're seeing is nothing compared to what God is going to do in your life. He said, you have, ain't seen anything yet. He said, this, uh, uh, I wish I'd recorded it. Uh. I didn't record. Uh. So me, you were there, right? You should help me, okay? I can't remember half the things I cannot remember. Those days, they used to record all the prophecies. I say, it's so amazing. Uh, what, it is, what you're seeing is just a little bit of what God's going to do. And uh, it says, the enemy wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy you, but God's kept you. And you're going to see land given to you. You're going to see properties given to you. You're going to see houses released to you. I say, amen. Hallelujah. Huh? I'm claiming that. I'm not going to retire. I'm going to, you know, I see this man, I get inspired by him. Huh? And how he's serving God and how God is just releasing the resources into this man's life. And he's in, residing in America, but oh, next time he's going to come again. Huh? Pastor Kassif, the last time he came, remember, he preached in uh, our huh, Wudu service as well. And uh, he's a tremendous man of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we need to have open to God's God's word. We need to hold God's word in our mind. No, it's so easy for us to have a right mindset when you're in church because you're surrounded by people who love you, who care for you, yes. But then come Monday, <laughs> what happens is, come Monday, life's going to be tough. Huh? Things are going to happen. Are you going to change your temperature? Are you going to shift your thermostat now and change it according to the temperature around you? Or are you... It's going to still set your thermostat on the head and not beneath, even though you feel like you're beneath. Are you going to keep the thermostat that says, I'm more than a conqueror, amen? amen? Even though you feel like you're defeated sometimes. That's how you, you're going to set the thermostat. You're not going to keep it go up, down, up, down according to your environment. You've got to believe God that your mindset is there. It doesn't matter what happens around. And what happens is because you're, this, you're going to set your mindset, everything will come up to your level that you have set. Did you, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand? Do you see the picture? Huh? How the devil has lied to us and how he has tried to get us tired and get us weary. In fact, that's one verse that's very important. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 3, here says, For I consider him that endured such contradiction of sinner against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your body. Is that what it says? Okay, this is a wrong verse actually. Uh, I don't know, I think sh this is what? NIV. Okay, it's, uh, I think the one that I want is... Uh, King James Version, I think. Okay, what it says is that, lest you be weary and faint in your mind. Here say, loose heart. Huh? It's talking about the heart. Which is, here, this is where the devil will attack you. This is where the devil will try to get you to quit. When you get tired and when you give up. It is in your mind. Okay, let's jump this because I don't have the verse. <laughs> no. No. Okay, it's okay. Okay, so let's go to the five lies that the devil tried to get us to try to get us to quit. Okay, let's uh, tackle that first. Let's look at the passage of Nehemiah chapter 4. Remember the book of Nehemiah here? It's about the children of Israel. How they were taken captives to the nation of Babylon. And a new empire took over from Babylon and they were the Persians. And the king was very favorable towards the Jews. And Nehemiah was a cupbearer for the king. And he was so disturbed that his... 
His country is in shambles and the walls of Jerusalem are broken down. And so the king allows some of the Jews to go back to their country and he, he requested from the king to be able to build the walls again. Because he understand that if the walls are not built, even if the Jews go and back again, what happened without the walls to protect them? Enemies will come in to plunder them and to steal from them. So God instructed him to take the people back and to build the walls of Jerusalem. So this is where it all starts with Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 1. He has to face many obstacles, many uh, challenges. And one of the challenges is this man, Sanbalak. Okay, he heard that they were building the walls here in chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Huh? When Sambalak heard that they were build, rebuilding the walls, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews. Okay, so here, let's stop that there first. Sambalak represents who? The devil and his plans for your life. That's what his plans are. Of course, to destroy you, kill, steal and destroy. <laughs> In the same way, I want you to know that the moment you say, I want to rebuild my life, I want to come to church. I want to receive the word of God. I want to really grow next year. I want to see, uh, in fact, next year's theme we're going to tell you is, means rebuilding the church or building the church and building your families. Okay, when you start saying, oh, your people are getting excited about building the church. The land is coming. You're going to build the church and you're going to receive the teaching of God's word. You think the devil's going to be happy? No, he's furious. The devil is going to be angry. Here say that Satan is furious. Sambalak was furious. He was angry. So the devil is going to stop you from knowing the word, from understanding, not just come to church, oh, let's hear the, the word. I want to challenge you to this year, even before the year ends, that you're going to take word of God seriously. And you're going to receive, listen to the word of God intently and believe the word of God and Pray the Word of God uh, and declare the Word of God over your life. Not just once, not just on Sunday, but every day of your life. You're going to declare the Word of God because it's just not one time they are going to see this happen. The mindset can only happen as you do it repeatedly. Okay, In your connect group, in your daily devotions, in your uh, prayer a prayer time, whatever it is, you need to get the Word of God inside your heart. You need to build the walls. The, the walls are built by, on truths or it's on lies. So you need to tear down the lies and you need to build the walls based on truth that will protect you. If not, the devil will just keep stealing from you. How much can the devil steal from you? If you keep believing his lies, then he keeps stealing from you year after year after year. And you wonder what, what happened to all your things, huh? He's got it. He's got all your stuff, all right? All your lost opportunities, all your lost time, all your lost health, huh? Your finances, your peace of mind, everything that he can lay hold on, he's going to lay hold on. Okay, verse 2. Okay, listen to here. Verse 2 here. And what happened? In the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, this is what he says. He's mocking the Jews. This is what he says. What are those feeble Jews doing? Look at the questions. There are five questions here. Will they restore the walls? I go back to the verse. All right. Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they really bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble, burn as they are? You see that? Again. We see that Sembalak is questioning, just like the devil is questioning. The devil is also questioning what God says. That's what the devil wants to do, okay? So what are you going to do with those questions? We're going to look at those questions. And we're going to see the lies, and we're going to see how we're going to attack those lies. All right, are you ready? Okay, these are the five lies that Satan tried to uh, speak to you to try to get you to quit. Are you ready? The lie number one is, who are these feeble Jews? You know what he's trying to do? The word feeble. It means he tried to undermine you and say, you don't have the strength. You don't have what it takes to be a strong Christian. He wants you to believe that you are a weak Christian. How many of you have believed a lie like that? Oh, 
I can't be as strong as Pastor, or I can't be as strong as Noel and some of these leaders. I'm a weak Christian. No, Pastor, I can't do this. I can't pray. I can't do this. I can't do that. You don't have what it takes to be a strong Christian. That's what it's going to tell you. It's a lie. All right? It's a lie. He wants you to feel weak. He wants you to think that you're weak, that you're different from everybody else, that, oh, I, I, I don't have what it takes to be a strong Christian. You've got to attack it with the Word of God. And what's the Word of God says? Ephesians 6, 10 says, Finally be strong in the Lord and in His mighty might. So you've got to say God's Word and say, I'm strong. Everybody say, I'm strong. I'm strong. In the power of His might. Come on, I'm not weak. I'm strong. Yeah. So you're going to speak the Word of God. You only have, you, you can't just, oh, okay. You have to open your mouth. You have to declare what the Word of God, 1 John 4, 4 says, my dear children are, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. And that's not talking about Jesus. It's talking about you inside. is greater than he that is in the world. You are greater than all the devil put together. You've got to believe the Word of God. <laughs> Again, not just once when you're in church. Every day you've got to speak the Word of God. Huh? Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ. Amen? Amen. Come on, I can do all things through Christ. You, you've got to believe that. I can. <laughs> Don't let the devil tell you, oh, you're too old already. You know? Last year, I, I struggled with my uh, health issues. And the devil whispered to me, oh, you're getting old. You're taking too much on yourself. You know, you should just uh, blah, blah, blah. You should slow down and, you know, you, you, uh, God, God was good. I was healed of all that uh, uh, problems that I had. And now with the prophecy, now I'm getting energized. God, yeah, it's not finished with us yet. God, the greater days are ahead for C3 Clang. Hallelujah. Not just one land. We're going to believe God for lands that's going to be released into our church. Amen. Praise God. This is only the start of the miracle that God has for us. So, don't forget that. Don't believe the lie of the devil. Attack the lie with the truth of God's word. Second lie, what he says? What did he say is the second lie? Are they going to restore it for themselves? In other words, huh, he's mocking you. Eh? You're just praying this prayer because you are selfish. You have got wrong motives. Do you know that? He's trying to, huh? Try to bring condemnation in your heart and say, you're being greedy. Wanting God to bless you with more. You should be contented with what you have enough. I want you to dispel that lie with the word of God. Genesis 12 verse 2 says what? Huh? Because God, it is God's idea to prosper you. It's not your idea that you want to prosper. God says to Abraham, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. So it's God's will for us to be blessed, to be a blessing. <laughs> not so that we can own five Cadillac <laughs> or... Huh? So we have five cars parked in our house so we feel huh? we are better than everybody else. Okay? God wants to bless us. God wants us to bless us so that we can give more. We can do more for his kingdom. Amen? Amen. So don't be satisfied with what you have. Jesus died on the cross to give you more. Jesus died on the cross to redeem you, to, not just to give you salvation, healing, deliverance, but to be a blessing. To other people, so let's pray. God, I'm not going to settle for less than what you have for me. I want to have everything that you have in turn for my life, to, okay? Now, how many of you, some people have this idea about uh, the blessing of God. It's like, we just have one pizza here. Just imagine, huh? One pizza I can share with everybody, yeah? Huh? Each one take one, eight pieces, no more already, right? And some maybe come and take two before you can even take two already eaten. Oh, not enough for everyone. So we have this idea that, wow, if somebody is blessed, wow, they've already taken a share, there's no, no more left. I want you to know that God is not a God of one pizza. God is a God of the pizza factory. Just imagine. He has all the dough, he has all the pepperoni, he has all the cheese, he has everything inside. He has everything. In fact, he has a blessing just for you. With your name on it, nobody can take it. Just waiting for you to claim your blessing. If you don't claim it, it'll still be there. All right? So let's not envy other people. Oh, other people, why they're, they're blessed and I'm not blessed. You have your blessing. You've got to 
fight to get your blessing, your inheritance. Plunder the enemy. I'm going to preach about, oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to preach about restoring uh, what you have lost. God's going to restore back everything that's been stolen, stolen from you. How are you going to get back everything that's been stolen from you? Huh? You know, I, I just, I actually lost my earring, which I shared with a prayer group. This is like the second time or the third time, I can't remember, but I specifically remember that second time was so fantastic because I found my earring. God told me specifically where to find it. Huh? And this time I lost it and I was waiting, God, where, where is that? Did you, uh, where, 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 where is my earring? And I said, this, is, this earring is very, 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 uh, not because it's very expensive, because it's very meaningful. It's my 25th anniversary gift from Pastor Joe. He seldom give me a very nice presents, expensive presents. It's the most expensive I can remember. <laughs> yeah, so it's like very meaningful. I wear it all the time. I said, like, oh, where is it? And I like, search your whole house, can't find God. You did it the first time just so clearly last year. You can do it again. Where is the ring, earring? I was praying and praying. And this time, guess what? Search everywhere, even call my facial person, please find for me. And they were so nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We look at all the towels, look at all the bed sheet. For two days, I couldn't find. Finally, on the third day, I was doing my exercise in my clubhouse. God, I was praying, God, I want my earring back. God, I want you. The boy say, search, search in the clubhouse. Search in the clubhouse. So after my exercise, I just walked down and I went right to the corner where they have this big, big, all these rods and this heavy thing, which I don't go at. I don't carry all those weights there. Now, but I don't know what happened. I just, the first thing I do is I walk over that side where I look down and there was my ring right there on the floor. How coincidental is that? Right there. So tiny. I didn't even wear specs. Come and see. Our floor is so dirty with so many, you know how, uh, the now it's cleaned up, right? It was so filthy, okay? <laughs> right there. Of all places, I just sat there and I found it. I found it. I was like, God. I asked God, what, what, what's this all about? Why is this the second time I'm, I'm, I'm finding it and God's allowing me to claim back what I've... And the voice of God spoke to me. I'm going to restore back everything that has been stolen from you. I'm going to restore back everything. Tell my people that they, they are going to be... They're going to get back everything that's been stolen from them or everything that they've lost, maybe through your carelessness. Maybe it's not somebody else's mistake. It's your foolish mistake. And you lost something that is precious to you. God say, I will restore. Amen. Hallelujah. I was so excited. I said, oh God, I'm so excited. I know everything that I've lost. I've lost it repeatedly so many times, this earring. That, so it's not about the earring. It's God's giving me a message that He wants to restore back to us all that. The years, the relationships, the pain that you have gone through, He's going to restore. Amen? Okay. Number third lie. It's, can they truly worship and offer sacrifice? The devil will tell you, you can't worship God. Who do you think you are? You're not worthy enough to worship God and your worship isn't doing any good. So don't come for the worship. Just come just before the message starts. That's the time you come. Skip the worship. It's not important whether you worship or not. That's a lie. That's a lie. Because it's not whether you are worthy to worship God because He is worthy. You are worshipping Him because He is worthy. Hey. So if He's going to come around and tell you, oh, your worship is not accomplishing anything. You can't even sing right you can't even sing in tune. Huh? So forget about worshipping. Don't open your mouth and worship. He tries to keep you quiet so that you won't worship because he knows there's power in worship. That's one of the most powerful tools that you have if you want to see things restored back to you. Okay? I'm telling you, I'm giving you already the answer. Is start praising. Start praising God. Look, ask Paul and Silas. Is worship powerful? Come on. What happened to them when they were thrown in a prison? When they started to worship God? The, wall, the, the floor started to shake. The walls started to shake. Huh? The prison doors flew open. The chains on their hands and on their feet were broken and they were released. Look at, ask Jehoshaphat when he sent the army out of praisers and worshippers to fight in a battle. What happened? The enemy army started attacking each other as they began to worship God. They started killing each other and when the army came, the whole army was already defeated. We all died and uh, they just took the goods that was there. But what happened before 
They got the goods. What were they doing? What were they doing? They were worshipping prior to getting the goods. So you want to see things released to you, restored to you, you've got to get serious about worshipping God. Alright. So look at what happened and you will know that the devil does not want you to worship. He knows that when you worship, you're going to bind the enemy. Psalms 149 verse 59 says that when you are worshipping and when you are worshipping, let the high praises of God be in your mouth. He says, as you begin to worship God, out from your mouth are like two-edged sword that's going to be released from your mouth, that's going to execute vengeance on the nations. Here is talking about the devil, huh? the enemy nations and punishment on the people to bind their kings with chains and the nobles with fetters of iron to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Hello? All of us Christians, we're going to be able to execute judgment on the enemy when you start praising God. You see how, worship, how powerful your worship is? Do you see that? And another verse, just one more verse here. Psalms 8 verse 2 says, uh, Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemy. See that? To silence the enemy and the avenger. This is the next verse, huh? So you see very clearly that when you worship God, what are you doing? You silence the mouth of the enemy. That's why the devil wants you to be silent. Because the moment you open your mouth, you are going to silence him. And he is talking, he's not even talking about adults, he's talking about children and infants and babies. So bring your children to church. Let them worship God because the praises of children, I told Shepherd Center, I say it's your kids, the children who are worshipping God. That's why God is doing all these amazing miracles. They have miracle after miracle after miracle. Every time I go there, I will hear some more miracles of what God's doing. Is God working miracles in your life? Is God working miracles in your life? If it's God's, you, nothing, nothing has happened, like everything has gone normal. Every day is normal. Every day is the same old, same old. Maybe it's time for you to praise God. Maybe it's time for you to praise God. Amen. As you praise God, things that is stolen from you is going to be restored back to you. You're going to see the goods, the exploits that everything God has prepared for you. All right? Amen. Not when you have gone through your victory. Not when you have already your promotion. When you have your finances. When you have something good happen, then you praise God. Praise God when you're going through the trials. When you're going through the hard times. That's when you're supposed to praise God. <laughs> All right. Fourth life. Will they finish it within a day? Wow, the devil is... Look how sarcastic they, he is. Do you think you can really build it and finish the wall, building the wall in a day? Huh? It's mocking them, all right? And this is what the devil tried to tell you. Is that, do you think you're going to make it? Do you think it, what you started, you're going to end up finishing what you started? Hmm. You can tell him that... God is the one that often to finish of my faith. He started something, he's going to end. It's not based on me. Yeah. It's him. He has already set it. Yeah. His plan for your life yeah. to bless you. Yeah. Oh, I'm telling you. I, so don't listen to him and say, you're not going to finish what you started. We are going to finish what we started. God's ordained for us before the foundation of the world. Okay, final lie I want to say this is lie five. Can they revive the stones from the dusty rubbles, even the burnt ones? You see again the sarcasm here? This is a lie. What he's saying here is that your life is too ruined, too bad, your life. It's so bad, you've blown it big time, it's gone. Forget it. Your life's not going to change. Really? Is it too late for you, church? Is it too late for some of you? <laughs> Was it too late for the thief on the cross when he said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into paradise? Was it too late for him? No, Jesus said what? Today, yeah. you are going to be with me in paradise. Was it too late for Abraham? He was 99 years old. God gave him, twin, God gave him the promise 24 years. He waited. Was it too late for him? Was it too late for his wife, Sarah, who is 90? Who is past childbearing age? Was it too late for him, for her too? No, God touched her. God healed her, and God gave her the baby boy. Was it too late for Rahab? She was a prostitute, but she she protected the spies. 
She blessed the spies. As a result, God blessed her and God protected her. Hallelujah. And God put her name in a book of halls of heroes. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see that? It's not too late for you. It's not too late for any of your, your children or for your loved ones or for anybody. But you've got to believe the word of God. You've got to believe the word of God. It starts by you believing the word of God rather than believing the lies that the, 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 the devil has been telling you that it's already too late. You can't do anything about it. You can't change your marriage. You can't change your partner. You can't change your children. You, you can't change anything. Things are going to be the same as it is. If you will believe the word of God today. If you start declaring the word of God, you start renewing your mind and start having a mindset of God, set on God, I'm telling you, Everything can change. Hallelujah. Everything can change. You've got to identify the strongholds in your life that is limiting you, that is imprisoning you and keeping you small and limited. I've talked about that huh, a couple of weeks ago. And you've got to break, you've got to bind that strong man that's over your mind. That's what that tells you you cannot do it. And say, yes, I can in Jesus' name. I can do all things. I can change. Hallelujah. Amen. You believe that? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I want to pray for uh, Stuart and Sharon. I just feel praising, praying for you too. Can you come up, please? Let's, uh, I may not be able to pray for you because next, early of next year, I'm going to leave and I won't be able to say even goodbye. I don't know when I was. <laughs> so I just want to, this couple are, are going to leave, of course. Of course. Stuart has already left and just came back for a holiday. But Sharon is so dear to me, you know, and so dear to our church as a leader. And, uh, she, and she's going with the husband. Great step. Great decision to be with the husband. How long were you all separated for? Two years, can you imagine? Two years, all right? And uh, God so good kept, kept them together, kept the family strong in spite of them being apart for two years. And the boy, Sean, is doing so well. You know, are you going to pray for this couple? Huh? I sense great greatness over them. Great things that God is going to raise them up. I don't know. I, I don't know what it is, but something great that God's going to do over their lives. I'm going to pray for them. Cover them with prayer. All right, church. I want you to stretch your hands towards them. All right. Okay. Whatever they're going to do. Uh, some of you, please, uh, Sunita, Noel, come, come, come right front and pray with together with this. Okay. Come, come and pray for this dear couple, uh, Kim Ju and Sugyo. Please come pray with this couple or they are oh thank god i'm hallelujah thank you jesus how all of us pray for them hallelujah this we're sending them out we're not we're not losing them <laughs> we're sending them out we're, they've been raised up for this god's preparing them god's preparing them for this great future that God's prepared for them. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you. Kusharaba ki toro moshi karaba. I koro mo ki karaba rianda raba si karaba korianda raba se kere re rianda. Ho ki kere re riala raba di o tiri re ri o toro ba se kere re 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 rianda. O ria karaba se kere be re 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 riala raba se karaba riada raba ki o toro bo se kere re re riala raba standa. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, God. Father, I thank you for this couple. I thank you for the amazing plans that you have for them. Give them a future and a hope and an expected end. You have called them to a great purpose in you and together, together, they are a powerful couple with Sean and the future that you have for them is already sealed by the Holy Spirit. Your plans for them has been sealed by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the enemy cannot touch whatever God has already ordained for you to have. All these years, He has prepared you. And what you are going to see is not what you can imagine. It's far bigger. It's far bigger than what you have thought. God has put you for His kingdom has raised you up for his kingdom and the enemy tries to steal and he has no he tried to touch you and he steal from you but because of prayers prayers yes. prayer that surrounded you has protected you all these years and kept you all these years strong and stable and steadfast 
because you put God as the center of your life. Amen. Lord, I pray for this couple that they continue to go from strength to strength. Yes. Amen. That's right. Not slowing down, but you really prepare for them as they enter into this new phase, yes. this new transition. It's going to be a new day. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Right. Oh, they're going to see the fruit of all their prayers answered. Yes. God said, do not worry. God said, do not worry. God said, I'm going to take care of all the needs. Not just for your personal needs, because I already prepared for the highways to come down, all the crooked ways to be straightened out. When you go there, you'll find everything already prepared for you. God's going to send the right people to come to surround you, support you, and do everything. A family going to settle in really, really easy. And you'll be surprised. God's already sends angels ready to prepare a way for you. Hallelujah. God said not to worry because all the things I've already supplied for you, provided for you, and the things that you're worrying about for your family, all is done. <laughs> your prayers are answered. Hallelujah. And you can go without any worry, anxiety, and, and fear of the future because I already prepared for you every single thing before the foundation of the world. But walk. Walk closely with me. Steward. Learn to hear my voice. Right. I will tell you very specifically the right decisions to make. You will know. You are going to be the leader of the house. Yes, and you will have the wisdom and the knowledge to make right decisions. The enemy have set traps to try to stumble you, but it's not going to work. Right. You are going to have eyes to see those traps. You're going to have eyes to see the pitfalls. And you're going to walk over it. It's not going to affect you because you have been covered in Thank you, Father, for the great work that you're about to do. Release upon them. I pray for the anointing that's over them. Anointing to succeed. Anointing to prosper. And you, you say you give them the power to prosper, but you add no sorrow to it. So we thank you in Jesus' name. There will not be any conflict, anything that will conflict them, cause them to conflict, but there will be harmony and peace and unity in all the decisions that they're going to make. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And the resources to be flowing into their hands. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, the promotion is going to come not from men, not from the north, south, east and west, but from me. Because you are a humble man. You choose to humble before me and walk humbly before me. I will promote you. Hallelujah. My grace is upon you. Grace upon grace is going to flow through you. And people will see and know that the God is great God. It's good. It's amazing. And is a faithful one. Praise you in Jesus' name. We release them right now into the destiny that you have prepared for them, Father. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. Amen. How many of you are ready to praise God? How many of you are ready to get back the goods that the enemy has stolen from you? Are you ready? I want you to stand with me, shall you? Stand with me. I feel such an anointing today as the worship. Uh, leaders and you know Anand, Anand. Oh my goodness, Anand! You got to open your mouth more, Anand. You're keeping it shut for too long now. Ha! Ah, everything's gonna come back now. Hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! The anointing in this house. I'm telling you, there's an anointing in this house. As if we're gonna worship, worship God, praise God. God's gonna supernaturally bring people in. You'll be gonna meet people that you don't expect, and you're gonna invite them in. Stop looking at the same people. God's supernaturally gonna connect you with people that you do not even know yet. But He's gonna bring because you have a heart for, to build the house of God. You have a heart to build the kingdom of God. It's not about you, but it's about God. And God's gonna, you know. So stop worrying about your tiny little puny little lives your jobs and your family and that's all you think about let's think bigger and say god i want to be connected to this big vision that you have for me all right that together we're going to build the house of god amen like nehemiah built the walls to surround the jerusalem we are every one of us going to build the house of god together and make the house of god great hallelujah amen. hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want you to open your mouth right now. Everybody from front to the back to the side. Let's all open our mouth and begin to praise God. Hallelujah. Learn to praise God. Learn to praise God. Learn to open your mouth and praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and praise God. Everyone, I want to see you. Open your mouth now and begin to praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory 
to God. God's going to bring your husband back to you again. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's going to turn your life around. Hallelujah. God's going to restore your years of pain. Your years that you have lost. Your years of sickness. God's going to restore. Hallelujah. Praise you, O oh God. God's going to renew our youth. We're going to renew our youth. God's going to give you wisdom and knowledge. God's going to bless you with revelation, understanding beyond your age, beyond your education, beyond. Hallelujah. Receive that from God. Receive it from God. God's going to open resources into your hands. You're going to ask for more. You're going to ask for bigger. You're not going to ask for little. We're going to ask for much more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God's going to promote you in your school, in your company. You're going to shine for Him. Hallelujah. Shine for Him. It's all because of you, Jesus. It's because of you, Jesus, we are where we are today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, praise you for all that you are to us. You are a good, good Father. You are a good God. Hallelujah. Amen. Faithful to the end. Hallelujah. You're, what you started, you always finish. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. One, one, two, three. I want you to shout your praise. I want you to shout, restore. Amen. restore. Everyone shout, restore. 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 Church, amen. Church, amen. Amen. Get ready to see restoration in your life. Amen. Are we ready to worship God? Are we? Come on, let's let's worship God together. All right, it's Nita closer.